Let me now bring in Lieutenant General Ben Hodges, former commander of U.S. Army Europe. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Yumish. Now, Ukraine aid has been stalled in its fight. I should say Ukraine has been stalled in its fight against Russia. I wonder how much the aid that is stalled in Congress, how much it could, it could really make a difference here when you think about the boots on the ground and what Ukraine is trying to accomplish? Well, it would have two or three significant effects. Uh, number one, obviously, the kinetic effect, given Ukrainians the ammunition they need to, to stop these uh, large Russian ground attacks and also to protect the thousands of innocent Ukrainians who are being attacked every night by Russian missiles and rockets slamming into apartment buildings like the one you're showing right there. But it also would have a significant effect on Russia. Russia is counting on the U.S. turning its back on Ukraine. Uh, They're hoping for a Trump uh, election in November so that real support for, the, for Ukraine will dry up. That's what the Russians are counting on. And so if the president were to say, we want Ukraine to win, and if the Congress were to pass this aid package, that would take a lot of the steam out of Russia's uh, only hope. We've also seen NATO take steps to ensure Ukraine will continue to get military aid, even if former President Donald Trump returned to the White House. What does that say, you think, about our allies and our view and their view of our commitment to them, given the fact that NATO is now basically saying we're going to take this step in case the Americans' politics shift? Uh, this, this is embarrassing, Yamish. Uh, this tells you that um, our allies are losing confidence in the United States. And when they lose confidence in us, we lose influence with them. Yes, of course, our European allies should do more. All of them can do a lot more, but you've got several countries that are given a much larger share of their GDP than we are. So um, I think we do not want to lose the influence that we have in Europe because all of our best and most reliable allies come from Europe, as well as Canada and Australia. And so this, this war in Ukraine is about a lot more than just Ukraine. Well, I have to ask you, what do you think it would take for Ukraine to win here? I know you've talked about sort of what the aid could do for them. What does that look like if they win? Yeah, three things. Uh, and thanks for asking that. Number one, victory for Ukraine means ejection of Russia back to the 1991 internationally recognized sovereign borders of Ukraine. That includes, of course, Crimea. That could have happened this past year if we had made that commitment to help them win. But that's number one. Number two is the provision of long-range precision weapons, such as ATACMS or the German Taurus, uh, that can make Crimea untenable for Russian forces and also can neutralize Russia's only advantage, which is their mass, because with long-range precision weapons, you can destroy headquarters, logistics, and artillery. The third thing that they need, of course, is the protection of their civilian population from Russian attacks. These uh, illegal criminal attacks against civilian targets that are happening every night. They need more air and missile defense to protect them. And then finally, clarity from the United States. For the president of the United States to say, it is in our strategic interest that Ukraine defeats Russia, and we're gonna do everything to make sure that happens. Not this, frankly, empty phrase of we're with Ukraine for as long as it takes. No, nobody believes that anyway. I want to also turn now, of course, to the other big war that's happening abroad, and that is, of course, what's going on between Israel and Hamas. President Biden has told Israeli, uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu that he would put conditions on U.S. military aid if Israel didn't do more to protect civilians and humanitarian workers in Gaza. Do you think Israel is really taking that threat seriously? And what would withholding military assistance um, do for Israel's fight in this war? Well, um, this, this is a very tough situation for the Israelis, but also for the president. But it's an even tougher situation for thousands, hundreds of thousands of Palestinians who were caught in this terrible conflict. Look, uh, Hamas is a terrorist organization, and all of them should burn in hell forever. But the thousands of Palestinians who live there uh, are caught here being used as shields by Hamas, but they are being killed by Israeli operations. And the burden is on the Israelis to protect innocent people despite what a terrorist organization is doing. I can't tell yet how much influence we've had with uh, Israel and, and their policy. Um, I, I'm sure there is some of it, but I just can't tell yet. But I think it's going to require more steps from our side to tell the Israelis you can no longer use American weapons or American ammunition 
uh, inside Gaza, for example, or any, anywhere that um, extends or enables the greater Israel ideology. That means illegal settlements in the West Bank, uh, doing anything that extends beyond Israel's borders. Well, something else really striking happened today. Benjamin Netanyahu said that a date has been set for Israel's invasion into Rafah and that he also said that victory for Israel requires that an invasion of Rafah happen. But over a million people, of course, have been taking shelter there. So I wonder what impact do you think invading Rafah could have um, when you think about the fact that there are so many people there, um, especially if Israel takes that step without having a serious plan to protect civilians there? Could that impact their aid, their relationship with the U.S.? I think this would be a catastrophe if Israel launches an attack into Rafah, a place with thousands and thousands of innocent people, uh, if the Israelis continue the same sort of tactics that they've been using. Uh, and plus, I mean, I think it would be almost impossible for the administration to continue to support Israel uh, in a significant way because, I mean, this would be the prime minister of Israel telling the U.S. administration, pound sand, uh, we're going to do what we have to do. That's after Vice President Harris has said it would be a disaster for Israel to go into uh, Rafah, for example. I think that the problem here is that the goal that Prime Minister Netanyahu has set to destroy Hamas is a totally infeasible objective. You cannot destroy a terrorist organization. We tried for 20 years to destroy the Taliban and Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, and we never did it because you have to address the source. What caused an organization like Hamas to uh, come, come on the scene and what keeps it going? And just killing your way um, is not going to get it done. There's going to have to be a political objective that is sustainable. And, of course, that means a two-state solution. I also want to ask you, as you said, it, you know, it would be impossible for the U.S. to continue to support Israel if they went into Gaza, into Rafah. Why do you think President Biden was unable to convince Benjamin Netanyahu to not move forward with this military invasion? I think that... Uh, they are not, the Israeli government, this particular government is not convinced that the U.S. would ever actually use the ultimate leverage that we have. I think that they are so accustomed to uh, Republican administrations, Democratic administrations always supporting them, um, that they are confident that we would never actually use the leverage that we have. And I think that um, if this continues on the path that it is, um, and again, I want to be very clear. What happened on October the 7th, horrible. Everybody involved in that on the Hamas side should, should burn in hell forever. But that is no reason, that's not acceptable for Israel then to use aid that we provide and kill thousands of innocent Palestinians. We're going to have to find a way to get towards a two-state solution. This war is not about religion, it's about land. Well, thank you so much, Lieutenant General Ben Hodges. Thank you for the privilege. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.